do 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 do. I'm here with Dominic Bukesh, who will be talking to us about domains of all kinds, but also managing his own domain and then gifting domains, which is interesting. But I got a preview of this presentation. It promises to be an awesome overview of what it means to have a space of your own online over time. So Dominic, with no further ado, let me let you take this over. I will remove myself and enter the presentation and hopefully I'll be jumping in throughout the course of the 15 minutes to chat with you about it. So thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Jim. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, or indeed any uh, time of day you may be uh, hearing this at. So I want to talk a little bit about what I learned from the 20 years of giving domains as Christmas presents and also, of course, using domains for other purposes as well. So I want to talk a little bit about my story. Uh, and I, but I wanted to sort of share the lessons, what, you, what I think you need to know, uh, things you need to avoid, things you can do with all of this, uh, maybe some of the dilemmas you're facing, and then also what's new in this space, what's new uh, letting us create websites uh, based on domains. So this is my story. My first website I built in HTML, handwriting HTML in 1998, and it was hosted on a university website uh, server, just as so many people's websites were back then. And it, of course, started with that famous Del uh, Deluxe. And uh, but in 20 in 2000, I bought my first domain, bohemica.com, to share teaching materials for Czech as a foreign language I've developed. About 2005, I about finally bought my personal domain. I don't know what took me so long. And, and I started dom buying domains as kind of a way of creatively expressing myself in, in a strange way, perhaps. And so I own the domain stretchpresskrk.com. Stretchpresskrk is a famous Czech sentence without any vowels. And so I own that dot com domain for that. And now it's 2020, and I have about 30 domains to my to my name across various projects, personally, uh, things that I've bought for friends. So, so domains kind of a part of uh, of my life. Currently, metaphorhacker.net is the one where I'm perhaps the most active where as, a, as a blogger about metaphors. But why is it that I'm owning so many domains? Is that, well, it's really good to have for email. So you don't want to have those at Gmail, at Yahoo, perhaps. Uh, and that's going to make it uh, makes it like looking much more professional. Have more control. For example, Gmail, Google, at any time take away um, my at Gmail address if they decide so. But I always own my domain, so that's that's really good. Of course, websites. Uh, you want to have websites again that you can uh, that you can host on a domain that you own your identity. But I have also found domains being great gifts for friends. I've bought them for friends who needed a website. I have bought them uh, for children. For uh, for new parents, uh, for their children as a as a gift, sort of a christening gift, and but I also, as I said, I sort of use them to express myself creatively. Occasion I have a I have kind of this this notion of oh I I wonder what it would be like to own a domain something something dot com. So, so I have bought a few just on a whim uh, on a whim like that. So so those are some of the reasons, and. One of the things that I've realized when people sort of think about the web is they don't understand some of the key concepts about um, how the web works. And that makes it difficult for them to conceptualize how domains work and what they do. And so the first concept that I always like to tell people, everything, every web page, everything you see on the web in your browser is a file that lives on a computer somewhere. And the browser is just a piece of software that opens the file and, and shows it to you. And every computer that that file lives on on the internet has a unique number. It's called the IP address. And the IP address, however, can change of that computer. But what cannot change is a dom domain that you own. And that domain is kind of a verbal shortcut. So it's something that you understand as a human, but also it's something that you can change on the background in, in your DNS server. You can change which number it points to. So you can move your uh, your sites, your files across all the all sorts of different servers, and I do it all the time. But uh, the domain stays the same. So people who want to come to your website don't have to remember a new number as if you're sort of changing your phone number. So that's kind of where that comes from. And uh, but I'm finding that people still don't understand even the basics of how domains work. You know where, what what the relationship is of that domain to a server. So this is a slide I did back in 1998 when I first was doing training to people about computers back in in Prague. It's in, in Czech, but it's kind of obvious you know how the domains work. You have, you've got the sort of the TLD or the top level domain or country domain, and and then all the the names and the WWHTP and so on. And people still quite still don't understand that all that well, even 22 uh, 22 years later. But nevertheless, um, that is something uh, you know that is something that people people should understand. So I want to sort of mention a few few things about about that. So here are some this examples. 
from a session that I've run. So, but Jim, yes, please. No, it's interesting. I'm sorry. I mean, I promised you I'd interrupt. So a couple of things, you know, I started kind of getting my own domain and managing stuff as a, as what they called in the U S a blog father. I got a domain name for my son and I started building a WordPress site around that. And so that idea of the personal story you're telling is super mm. compelling. And on top of that, I like the idea that you associate the domain name with a phone number because a lot of what my early kind of trying to get the idea like you to get people to think about this as a, a sense of their identity online, I use the metaphor of the home. So this is your house and the address, that number address is actually a kind of shortcut or a metaphor for the actual physical server that you're on. And so it's interesting to see how long you've been doing a similar thing of trying to educate and give people a certain amount of literacy around what exactly it is when we're talking about domains and hosting. So super cool. I am loving this. Yeah, well, thanks. And, you know, it's, it's a magical phone number, though, right? Because you own it and you decide who, it, you know, where it goes to, unlike the phone number that, that your company, you know, that your phone company owns. And so it's a much you know, you, you could have sort of moved that around for a long, for you know, and, and it's kind of like this virtual address that's it's great sort of magic of the of the virtual, right? So that you can Absolutely. move a house, but this is the domain is just like your, your perpetual forwarding address, you know. So that's, and it, you know, that really hit there. me in 2006 when a colleague, Alan Levine, was leaving the Maricopa Community College. Yet I still followed him at cogdogblog.com. And so he was like, I'm taking all of my work, but it's still following with me and you can always follow me. So it's not like when he had that tilde space or a university address, all that mm -hmm. stuff now either needed to be moved, which you'll talk about how difficult that is, but just lost. And that mm -hmm. idea of managing the work you've done is super, super cool. So I'll stop mm -hmm. interrupting. <laughs> well, no, great. please, please go on. So so I just want to give an example of you can have an HTML file on, on your drive. So if you want to have it as a, you know, a met, take the metaphor and sort of physically embed it, you can literally create an HTML file, put it anywhere on your computer, that you call it .html, double click on it, it will open your browser. And that's just, that's how all the web actually works. And uh, and the web servers, what people call the web servers, it's just literally a computer sitting somewhere, you know, under uh, under Sundar Pichai's desk at Google, there's there's a big computer where all of this is. Of course, it's now massively virtualized and complicated, but essentially, it always boils down to a, a hard drive somewhere with a file on it. Um, and and all of this is literally when you go to myserver.com slash index.html, it's, it's literally just pointing to a server that has a, a path going somewhere, even though sometimes it could be in a database. For example, on Amazon, you're probably just pointing to an entry in a database, but that database is a file that sits somewhere on a computer or millions and millions of computers. Often the URL has lots of junk around it that, that just literally helps Amazon track you where it came from and things like that. So sometimes that's also worth knowing about and how, how these things work. But again, the, the key thing to understand is that is that everything that comes before the first slash, that is the server. And that actually, you can point to that with a number, but that number can change, whereas the domain, as long as you own and pay for it, you own it, and so you can point it to those different numbers. So that's kind of how it works. But but obviously, you know, there's there's there's, there's, there's quite a bit more to it, but it's a bit of, bit of magic. So so how do you get one of these domains? Well, you buy them where people call registrars. And uh, and that makes it very simple. You can buy a dot anything domain. Uh, the dot something is called a TLD or top level domain. And that's uh, and that is unfortunately a bit more difficult because that those are managed by different institutions uh, and they have different rules, different prices, uh, different, uh, for example, different amounts of time you can buy them for. So .com you can buy for 10 years. Uh, so other domains you can only buy for two years. .net I think is, is one of those. And then, of course, what's very popular these days is the country-based TLD. So for every country has been assigned a top-level domain, like uh, .it for, for Italy, or .cz uh, for Czech Republic, or .uk for, for the United Kingdom. And it, they can be actually combined with names. Very So you've often seen you see domains like .tv, uh, and that that's, uh, belongs to a country, Tuvalu, which actually has only 11,000 people. It's a tiny island in the Pacific, but it's one of the main sources of revenue for, for the government by farming out the domains because they're very popular with TV. People, Somalia is popular nowadays, or LY for, you know, I have uh, domains from, from Libya and I have a website called checkly.com, but, but one of the reasons, uh, one of the difficulties with these domains is they're quite expensive and capricious. So I was thinking about getting check.ly, but it's just too expensive. It's, it's, it's not massively expensive, but it costs maybe $100, $100 instead of $10 a year. So I, I really 
didn't end up being worth it. Italy is very popular. Call for Colombia.com is not there. So, so those are those are some of the things that I think is, is worth knowing about. You know, explore a bit, look around, see what other people are doing, how they're expressing their their identity through domains. And I always find that fascinating what people are doing there. But there are some lessons that is that I've learned over 20 years. And one of the lessons is that 10 year is literally nothing. That's gonna go by like this. And it's like one of those sort of folk wisdoms. But we bought a domain back in 2005 for a project called, uh, uh, for a project that that was children as researchers.com. And I said, well, let's buy the domain for 10 years. And that's, you know, that's forever. And that's 15 years ago. That domain is gone because the project, of course, is gone. The funding is gone. So, so when sometimes when you buy domains for projects, it's, it's worth thinking in longer terms than 10 years. And you, you can still find it via the, the internet archive.com. But, but there is a bit of a commitment when you buy a domain because it's not something that just exists independently of you that requires payment. It's also worth separating um, domain and hosting. So when you buy a website hosting, the host will very helpfully often offer uh, to buy a domain, free domain. So they'll take care of all that hassle of buying it. But remember, if you want to make, move the host, you also have to uh, move the domain with them. And that actually, that's that's the next point. So transferring a domain can be a bit of a pain. The register system uh, for DNS, uh, for domains, uh, so the domain name system is a bit of a kludge that's kind of magical that it works at all but uh but be, be aware of the transferring domains between register that's not simple and the other thing you could lose a domain and the one thing you don't want to do is lose a domain or even let it expire because i people there are people who are squatting on domain names the minute that something expires somebody will buy it up even if they don't need it so i've had some i've let domains expire because i thought well i don't need it now but maybe it's an obscure name who would ever need it but it turns out somebody's bought it and they have it. They've had it for ten years because it's worth it to them. They get a discount on it, and they would like to sell it back to me. And I, you know, I don't want to buy it back. So, so that can happen to you. Don't let your your domain expire. But also, as you're doing all of these things, always think about moving. What is going to happen in five years? What? How do I move my identity, my things with me? So, so choose your registrar wisely. You know, be be aware of all of these things that that, that may be happening. Don't let me discourage you from buying a domain. Do buy a domain, but be aware of of, of all of these things. And, and you know, I had to learn them over 20 years. So hopefully I'm sort of giving you a quick heads up on, on things to be aware of. It's a great point. I think the biggest pain point we have with people who are registering and using hosting is understanding the life cycle of a domain. And you did an excellent job of pointing out there's so many different registrars. All the country registrars deal with things like privacy, how long it's in redemption, when will it be deleted differently? So depending on the domain extension, you know, the way in which you can get that domain back, how long it will take to expire. Some are really useful. For example, a good indicator is the U.S. has no privacy. You can't have a private .us domain, whereas, mm. you know, Italy, it's built in. Canada, it's built in. So a lot of times the domain, the regulations around a domain extension tells you a lot about the country or the organization that controls mm. it. It's super interesting. Of course, yeah, and any sort of committing sometimes when you, to to different things, you know, it's it's uh, the life cycle of the domain varies quite interestingly, and and it's also it's it's also the privacy. I don't have a slide about that, but it's important to know if you buy a .com domain and you don't buy what's called the DNS domain privacy with it, and some registrars include it by default, some sort of charge you extra. Your name has to be registered, including your address and phone number and email yeah. somewhere. And then, and then I, for many years before I, I was too cheap to buy the domain privacy, I was getting the, you end up doing a lot of spam, and because it's available yeah. to anybody, who will send you offers pretending uh, that there's somebody else. And so, so there's a lot of phishing going on around people who own domains. So you definitely want to keep it private. Yeah, they not, be aware of it and ignore all the offers that go around with it. Exactly. We get that all the time, people reaching out to us, where now everybody who has a domain with us, um, privacy comes with it because just the phishing scares were too much. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And and so so many registrars now offer it for free, but uh, but some of the big ones, some of the, the historical ones don't have it. And so, so and there's some bit of handy jargon, and I don't want to sort of over... Uh, over scare people, you know, DNS is perhaps the thing people should be aware of because that often shows up as a field on your computer. That st stands for the domain name system, domain name system. And often on your computer, there's going to be a, a number that's going to that's going to point to a DNS server. So for your computer to be able to actually find any domain, it needs to have a name of a domain server, domain name server. And there are, there are hundreds of 
probably uh, hundreds of thousands around them on the internet, and they're all interconnected for to each other. But you need to have be connecting to one or or two to have one as a backup. And so and and your 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 provider will give you one usually. But there's also you can you can sort of go, get some better servers. Google's offering one, Cloudflare, others uh, there others as well. Uh, and that so that's that's a useful term to know. IP address is the IP address is the, is, the, is the phone number for any server. That's sort of that number that any any server on the internet has to have. An X record is very useful if you're if you're using a domain for email. That's actually that's the part of a domain. Each domain has some the IP address associated with it. It points to, but it can also have an MX record, which is the bit that tells you tells you where to send the emails. And that's very handy if you want to kind of move your emails around. And then there's as you're sort of playing around with domains, it's worth finding out about what A names mean and, and C names. It's essentially the way in which you can point to uh, point to websites. Usually, you want to uh, do this sort of a, the A name is the one that I, I would prefer to use, but the WW could be uh, a, a C name that's just like a sort of a, um, a name that, that points like an alias to a name. But it's a little more complicated, but that that's well worth knowing. So those are just some of the, the things that I, I sort of, uh, as I buy my domains and manage my domains, I kind of those are the terms that come up very often, and I, I sort of find it useful knowing a bit more about how they work. So finally, it's my last uh, uh, word on this: is what is new in this space? So when I started, it was all uh, you know, it wasn't brand new, but it was only about so sort of, ten years into people owning their their own domains, and and a lot of this was unknown. New companies were emerging. And I hosted my first sites in as, as HTML. Then I went to Drupal, custom based. But right now, I think that the gold standard is WordPress for hosting on the actual server. So, so when you're when you're pointing to when you when you're pointing your site, uh, your domain to somewhere, you point it to a server that has hosting those pages. And WordPress, I would say, is perhaps the best content management system for blogging and everything. You can it's open source. You can host your own, or you can use another company who will host it for you. Uh, but there's a lot of competition. So, so even though I would say if you're not sure, go with WordPress. It's really good to move away from, move to, move around with. So I quite like it, like it about that. But it's a lot of competition. There's a whole sort of, uh, you know, sort of lots of innovation in this space that I, that I quite like. And one of the bits that I have now started using, I use Notion as my note-taking software. It's a, it's a note-taking software, a project management software. But they allow you to actually map any part of your any part of your notes say, space as into a website. Uh, and uh, so, and using something called using a company called Cloudflare that's managing a lot of a uh, lot of lot of the infrastructure of the internet these days and, and offering many free things. You can actually um, map your notion, your notes, your public notes onto uh, onto onto a domain. So actually, I have been doing that for some uh, for some sort of more uh, trans transitional um, work that I've been doing, and, and I'm really enjoy enjoying that. And, and finally. What's new in my life? And this is a completely unsolicited plug for Reclaim Hosting because I have been with many, many hosts over the years uh, and uh, always sort of changing the, the, based on how much work I want to put in. But I have moved almost all of my hosting to Reclaim Hosting uh, a few months ago, just before Christmas. And I have found it to be a great experience, really incredible, really incredible deal. So I'm saving a lot of money. And I, I'm saying that because I'm very impressed. But also the one thing I like about Reclaim Hosting is that, is that they use uh, a system called cPanel, as, as most hosts do, but they offer many of the best and most interesting open source platforms for hosting your website. And that, I think, is is uh, is, is sort of just worth for the price of admission, because you can experiment with all these things that I talked about. So, so that's kind of my, the last word from me. And that you know, so I, I have a final slide with just a few of the domains that I own. If you want, you know, I have my my lots of .NET domains, but some .com domains as well. So, so that that's that's me. That's one of that's that's sort of the huge network of identities that I've strewn over the internet over the years. But that's <laughs> that, that's kind of my final word. I have like a domain hoarding problem. <laughs> I think I have sixty something domains right now. And it costs money, right? I mean, it's 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 like it it's a, it's a financial commitment as well. <laughs> I spend, I actually track it. I spend seven hundred bucks a year on domains. Yeah. And so, like, I just bought one for an arcade I want to build in Italy called Bavacade.it. Mm -hmm. So I also am playing with extensions now because yeah. there's been an explosion. But I find it fun. Like the thing about domains too, and all the work you're talking about, which I think is marvelous, is I have found it fun to build these spaces and track this space and. I want to do a post eventually about all the domains in my life and each of them signify a project or an idea or a thinking. So to me, domains are also about tracking the development of my intellectual and personal life in really powerful ways. So Dominic, this was an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you everybody and have a great conference. Awesome. <laughs> um, nom nom.